today we're going to be speaking with uh, members of Vietnam Combat Veteran Coalition, and I am joined by David Martin, who is the founder, John Warwick, uh, Frank Ricchetti, Bill Davison, Tim McMahon, uh, John Barillo, and George Pager. So Dave, uh, why don't we begin with you as the founder of VCVC, and uh, tell us a little bit about your service. It was founded in July 1979, uh, around the Agent Orange issue, because none of the veterans organizations or the federal government took it seriously or thought it was a problem. So that's why it was uh, founded. Mm -hmm. We started by a group of, uh, of, of 10 uh, vets. Uh, you know, eight of them aren't, aren't here anymore. They just moved on to other places. But uh, I and Bill Navinger are still, are still in the organization. Mm -hmm. And then uh, around 1981-82, uh, Frank Ricchetti, I met him at an Agent Orange meeting. And uh, we just struck a, a common accord about our feelings about the federal government and the Agent Orange issue. So we teamed up right away. And, uh, you know, he's been an integral part of, uh, of Vietnam Combat Veterans Coalition you know, ever since. Uh, right now we have uh, 63 or 64 uh, active members, uh, most of them around um, the Mercer County, Trenton area, New Jersey, uh, into Pennsylvania. But we have members out in Arizona, down in oh, Florida, really? Texas. Mm. New York State and out in Pen uh, Western Pennsylvania too. Frank and I, and sometimes uh, Bill Navinger would go down to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. They had her these things called herbicide hearings every two months. We traveled down to D.C. on our own cost, our mm -hmm. own time, mm -hmm. and would testify, uh, you know, before their bureaucracy about the effects of Agent Orange. Uh, we also went to the state legislature, um, the assembly, and the, and the Senate in New Jersey, and testified there. Mm -hmm. uh, we wrote countless. Uh, uh, editorials, or, mm -hmm. you know, letters to the editors, put it that way. And we were interviewed m uh, many times in the paper. We have uh, some archives that are about like two feet thick about wow. how much press we got over the years because we were very uh, vocal about it, very persistent about uh, the Agent Orange issue. It became a, 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 a compensated uh, mm -hmm. and treated uh, condition, you know, mm -hmm. condition right. of, of the uh, Agent Orange issue, but it took a long time to get there. And the VA gave it up reluctantly because we trained dramatically when we were in war. And to come back to a country and, and be underappreciated like we were, it was a real uh, culture shock, you know. Mm. And it, it, uh, it affected a lot of us. And they, some of our guys, like, committed suicide or they went and uh, lived in, like, Washington State, like Western Washington State in the rainforest or up to Alaska. Mm. And, uh, or, you know, some of the guys uh, went on to uh, drugs, alcoholism, or just be complained loners, or else they just um, put a mask on for the whole world and, uh, you know, they heard on, you know, privately on their own. The new veterans, the Iraqi and the Afghanistan ones, and, and other places we may be in the world uh, as the military, that um, the government and the Veterans Administration would open their arms to these new, newest veterans because they understood us so well. But in fact, it's sort of like each generation of veterans, it seems like the government has to learn all over again. And, and that's the incredibly sad part of it, is to see these young guys that are committing suicide at 20, uh, 22 a day. Um, to me, that's just an unacceptable thing that these poor guys are going to have to go, th and women are going to have to go through what we went through, is just unacceptable. Hmm. So it sounds like there's a lot of bureaucracy still in the, in the mix. I'm very proud of what I... Uh, what I was able to do in Vietnam because of my background I was able to become a combat photographer mm -hmm. and contribute to a weekly magazine and color uh, not a weekly mag yeah we weekly newspaper and color magazine and which was for 69 was the best publication in Vietnam uh, judged by the other services so um, mm -hmm. I, I got to see the the good and the bad of Vietnam and the, and the incredible suffering that my fellow veterans and the, and the living conditions that they had to live in, they were there for each other. They were there for each other. And to this day, there's not a one of us that have ever re-experienced that level of brotherhood, except within ourselves and our own group that we've created. As far as Veterans Day, uh, it, it, it never really meant too much to me. Because when you, when you came back, the, the way we were treated, you know, one day they're, they're killing Chinese, the next day they want them to, uh, you know, just to put on a suit and tie or, you know, get a shovel or, or, or you know, get a, a wrench and go back to work and just shut up and raise a family. And nobody wants to know anything about what happened to them. And the whole time you got all this stuff in your head. You know, you see all this horror. You see all this terror. You're scared out of your gourd for the whole time you're over there. 
And when you come back, nobody wants to talk to it. And you can't, and after a while, like, you go, like, who am I going to tell anyway? Mm. You know, you, you, you're going to scare the hell out of your, of your parents or your, your, uh, your siblings or, or your friends. So you just don't tell anybody. You just keep it inside yourself. We, we were the first unit to be sent to the Mekong Delta, which was, like, mm. uh, water and swamps and, mm. and really, really, her, like, the, one of the most horrendous places you could think of being as far as... Um, you know the as far as the uh the place was like mm -hmm. you know people couldn't even believe it and when they see it today they still can't believe it the thing that sent me over the top and dave and a lot of us was uh agent orange because when we did come back and we 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 thought we survived the war but in actuality a lot of us didn't really because we were we got we were sick we had uh we had different. Uh, mm -hmm. We had different problems with our skin. We had uh, uh, various things, and and uh, with the the government, our government said, "Oh no, you don't have anything wrong. You know, you you'll be okay. You're young. It, you'll get over it." You know, which was all, which was all bull. Mm -hmm. I was part of the 25th Infantry Division, 65th Engineers. My job over there, I was a combat engineer. Oh. I was mine sweep team. Mm -hmm. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. Wow. I was a guy walking down the road with a mine detector, <sighs> and with using explosives too. How long did you do that? Uh, for about almost half of my tour mm. in Vietnam. After Vietnam, I was done with the military. I was right on my birthday. Or, okay. Uh, Laying in Vietnam, <clears throat> came on base. So, uh, when I got out, I was almost 27 years old. So when I got back, I was, I was, I, f I felt like out of place. I mean, uh, it's not like out of place, but a lot of these guys came back in Vietnam, they were young. Mm -hmm. I came back old, like a sergeant, like a, a captain, stuff like that. But I, uh, I had no problem uh, getting back in the groove with the people because I had a job. Mm -hmm. I had a good job and uh, I retired from that after 40 years. What did you do? I worked for a utility company, public okay. service. Mm -hmm. So I, was a, I ended up being a machinist, and, that, and that's exactly where I wanted to be, a machinist. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, so that's good. That was good. That was lucky like some of them guys. <laughs> <laughs> right. I joined in 1966, and um, I went to Vietnam in 67 to 68. I was in communications and intelligence out in the field most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I can't elaborate as much as some of the other guys. I still put so much of it behind me that I have to listen to them to tell me what I've done because mm -hmm. I've put much of it behind me. Uh, when I came home, I landed in California, took a flight back to Philadelphia and took a taxi cab at two o'clock in the morning back to Trenton and stayed at a local hotel before I went home because mm. it was a, a matter of maybe 10 hours from the time you gave up your rifle till you were sitting at home. It's such a strange con It yeah. was um, very, strange. very strange. I avoided most of the uh, conflict that some of these guys did at airports where you were spit on and you know different things. Mm. Uh, finally went home, tried to get my act together. I applied for many jobs which I was denied because they found out that we are Vietnam vets. And um, they thought most of us were on drugs. They assumed that we all did that. And um, you were denied a job because yes, you were at denied? IBM, I was trained in, in in their field. I went to the University of California, Berkeley, for my um, MOS, where I was trained out there before I went to Vietnam. And um, I couldn't get into my field here until I met these guys. I was um, very much a loner. And still am. If it wasn't for these guys, I, I, I'd still be stuck in the woods. And, mm. you know, and it's getting crowded up here. It's time to move on also. <laughs> um, Even in Kingwood, right? Oh, absolutely. Right, right. You know, when we came up here, it was uh, 5,900 families. I'm sure it's over, you know, mm -hmm. 3,000 now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's, it's a testament to your band of brothers and how you've ma managed to stay together to elaborate um, on what they what the general said about uh the yeah, va i've yeah. had a few claims in 
They told me it's an average of 285 days to look at it. And obviously the need is, is of the moment, and that's, I don't think it's too hard to understand if someone has a need of a moment, uh, at the moment, that's like life and death to them, and they can't be treated for one or two years, and they commit suicide. I don't understand why that's so hard to understand that the, the government has created a situation of hopelessness, and that person has no one to, to turn to. Mm -hmm. And even if they talk to someone and they feel better talking to them, they still go back to the situation that they came there with, which is they have no hope. A few of us, we know, you know, our days are short, months, years, whatever. These new vets is what I'm concerned about okay. because they have much more to go through uh, in some respects. Loss of legs, loss of arms. As long as I can put a fishing pole in my hand, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, do you, what would you say to the gentlemen, the uh, soldiers coming back now? What, would you, what advice would you give them you know, as a, you know, someone who's been looking back and seeing the new... Well, they, <coughs> they, they have to uh, join a veterans organization. I don't care what it is, but they have to. They have to start there, and they have to get a newsletter or a magazine from the vets organizations. They have to read it. They have to search out the, what their benefits are. They have to know what they're entitled to, mm -hmm. where to go for it, and how to, how to go about it. And if they join an organization, there's always people in an organization that can guide you through the VA sure. process mm -hmm. or any other process that you, you would have in your life. I want to end it right there, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. thank you so much, uh, Dave, for being here today, and John and Frank Ricchetti, Bill Davison, Tim McMahon, John Barillo, and John George Pager. Did I miss anybody? I don't think so. All right. Thank you very much for being with us today. Yeah, thank you, thank Hillary. You, Hillary.